What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest superior OS based on Android 13 and this of course includes the GApp version which I have flashed but there is also a vanilla version that you can try but I would definitely recommend flashing the GApps variant to avoid any kind of force close issues. This particular ROM is really good because it has the refresh rate customization and the MIUI camera stuff. I'll talk about that but in terms of the build date, this is the 9th March 2023 build. And the flashing guide will be present in the description as usual. Now let me show you the about phone section here. It shows that superior version is 13 release and this is the GApps included variant. The Android version is 13 of course and if you make this clock to 1 o'clock you will get the Android 13 easter eggs. And they definitely look cool. The Android security patch is still February 5th 2023 because the March security patch kind of hasn't released yet and here we have the stock kernel as the 4.14 bullex kernel the SNX status shows as enforcing. In the system settings this is how it looks like we have the system updater over here this looks cool you can check for updates from here but nothing yet because there is no newer updates. Let me go back we have the pop-up camera sound effects and we have this camera calibration option for the motorized front camera and again you can control the sounds of opening and closing the front camera let's talk about the home screen the wallpaper that i'm using is from the superior wallpaper app which you can get from here let me actually show you this quickly and these are the superior OS wallpapers that you can choose from there are plethora of collections of the superior OS wallpapers so yeah you will get amazing amount of collection of the wallpapers i have been using it with this one it shows be superior looks really good and to the left of the home screen, we get the Google's Discover page. The experience overall of swiping and stuff, it's really smooth, no issues. And here we have the widgets working, but the battery widgets I couldn't simply find, guys. So there is no battery widget on this ROM, I guess. But opening and closing the widgets, the animations of them are actually working perfectly fine. Swiping up will get you to the app drawer. And these are the stock apps that you will get on this particular ROM, except for the fresh walls and the Pixar app. Those are there because I was restoring my Google app data backup. Also, you get a calculator app where you actually have the history of the calculations. They don't really get away. And we also have this scientific kind of looking calculator. You can use this definitely if you want. As you can see, there is the delete option for the memory kind of thing. And you have these more options too. You can delete them or just keep them as you would want. So this calculator app is really good again. Also, there is the game space and you can add any game that you would want to actually enable into the game space kind of thing. And you can do all these customizations as you would like to. I was pretty lost because I got into the stock apps. But yeah, you are getting the superior OS launcher over here. And in the recent panel, you will see the RAM usage on the bottom just like this. We have the screenshot, the lens and the clear all option. And there are multiple amount of customizations like this. You can disable the suggestions. In the recents, you can disable the memory info and stuff if you want. And the app drawer customizations are there. We also have the home screen customization where you will get the wallpaper scrolling and zooming and the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen and stuff. All those things are present and just look at this once I go into any settings it does this splash kind of animation as you can see it just flashes the screen a little bit looks beautiful I would say in terms of the animations and stuff and of course double tapping to sleep is working perfectly fine even double tap to wake is working great too now the fingerprint scan speed is really fast and screen of a 40 is working perfectly fine to actually enable the always on display i have to go into the display setting and then lock screen because the always on display is not there in terms of the toggle i couldn't simply find it but yeah the always on display is working fine if you enable it so yeah this is how it looks and double tap to wake in the always on display is working fine and of course you get the android 13's bigger kind of clock they look beautiful and the fingerprint scanner even from the always on display is working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever and if i show you the face unlock yep as you can see it is working perfectly fine let me try one more time so yeah face unlock is working also the fingerprint scanner with the app lock is working perfectly fine so yeah the face unlock fingerprint scanner and the app lock everything is working great you do not need to worry about it and also you do get the google photos and stuff in the app lock you do not need to worry about that either now let's talk about the quick setting panel toggles as i said there is no always on display toggle over here and if i just show you the edit section these are the toggles that you can edit and add plethora of options are there differently but let me show you which ones i have added i have the wi-fi mobile data and the bluetooth toggle and stuff flashlight dark theme auto rotate night light screen recording and stuff there is no hevc but yeah it does the normal screen recording with the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time 
but let me tell you in the light theme quick sync panel actually stays white that is what i like over here and if you turn on dark theme of course you can choose the pitch black option and it will go pitch black all over the quick setting panel too no issues in the next panel we have the battery saver do not disturb google home controls data saver hotspot nearby share the sound toggle if you tap and hold it you will get the volume panel like this and you can like switch the output device from right here and of course you can expand the volume panel normally and live caption you can enable from here and the phone you can put it to general or mute or vibration from here and we have the reboot toggle from here too and you can directly reboot to the recovery if you want from here next we have the refresher toggle i have been using it with the 72 hertz it does not have quite 102 hertz refresher but it does have up to i guess 90 hertz over here but the colors definitely shift a little bit with that so you do not need to worry about it much because you will get used to it if you are using 90 hertz but yeah Overall, the refresh rate is there up to 90 Hertz and it is working fine. You do not need to worry about it much. But with the disc streaming turned on, the brightness goes a little bit weird sometimes. So I would say just use this device without the disc streaming, I guess. And the high brightness or the daylight sun brightness mode is there, which makes the display really, really bright when you go outdoors. That will really help. And the brightness slider, you can change the position from the customization. I'll show you that later. But right now, let me talk about the cameras. You are getting the Leica camera present by default here, and that is insane. And if you just switch the front camera, of course, even in the portrait mode, the front camera and stuff is working fine. Let me take a quick picture. And yeah, this is how it looks. The colors are really good, no issues. And if I go into the info, this is a 20 megapixel front camera selfie or portrait selfie. And the background blur and stuff is working great. If you just notice the background over here, so yeah, overall, the selfie quality and stuff will be fine with this. There is the 48 megapixel mode too. And if you swipe up, you'll get the vlog mode, vlog pro, slow motion up to 1080p, 960 FPS, I guess. So all these options are there. You do not need to worry about it. And it is working. And in the video settings, let me actually switch to it. We have up to 4K 60 FPS option. If you want to shoot 4K 60 FPS videos, you definitely can over here. We also have the pro mode it does work. As you can see, 4K 60 FPS is there and it should be working perfectly fine. Also, the documents mode and stuff is of course there. You do not need to worry about it. And of course, in terms of the lens switching and stuff, 0.6x or the ultra wide angle lens is working. 1x and the 2x mode is also working fine here. You do not need to worry about them. Now, you will also get the aperture camera present by default here. And it is asking for me with the permissions because I did not even open it. But yeah, you do get this aperture camera over here present by default too. If you want to use it, you definitely can. Before I show you the customization and mode settings, let me talk about the basic things like the safety net. Yes, it passes the safety net test right out of the box. So banking apps will not be a problem over here. The DRM info stays as L1, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. Also, it does offer Google Photos unlimited backup of Pixel and that is working perfectly fine. We also get the magic eraser if you are looking for that. In terms of the settings, this is how it looks like. We get the superior lab where you will get the customization. So let's just jump into it quickly. And this is how the animations looks like of this. We have the about team first, but let's jump into the status bar settings here. We have the network traffic indicator. In the status bar items, we have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons, of course. 4G icon instead of LTE, then the show data disabled icon, roaming indicator, and the battery styles. These are the options. There aren't much landscape art style and stuff. All those things are not there, but we do get the big circle, big dotted circle at least. And we have the battery percentage. You can put it to next to the icon and the inside icon. I've been using it with the big dotted circle and the inside icon and the clock position. You can change left, right or center. And we have the clock AM PM style. Auto hide option is also there. Let me go back in the quick setting panel. We have the vibrate on toggle touch data usage, hide quick setting in secure lock screen and stuff. And the brightness rider position, you can have it on show always. And the position, you can put it to bottom if you want. Auto brightness icon, you can toggle it on or off. And there is the title alignment. Then we have the portrait and landscape columns. You can customize those. In the button section, we have this volume button wick and the playback control. Then we have the navigations and in the system navigation settings. In the settings of it, we have this swipe to invoke assistant and that is working perfectly fine. There is the left edge, right edge customization. Then we have this amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture and the pill length you can customize, but there is no thickness customization for the pill bar. But we have this haptic feedback and in the advanced gestures, we have this extended swipe action and these are the options that you can customize it to. There is also the two button and three button navigations over here. No issues with that. Let me go back to the gestures here. We have the system navigation gestures again and we have this press and hold power button action, one handed mode and stuff. All these things are working fine. Quickly open camera is also there. Let me just test that. And yeah, it is working. You can just select the camera and put it to always that will work. 
and here we have the three finger screenshot gesture that is also working fine share edit delete options are there long press power button toggle torch i did test that it is working and we have the double tap to sleep in the status bar and lock screen both are there in the lock screen we have this charging info and the pulse then the media cover art fingerprint authentication vibration and the udfps kind of customization and you will get plethora of icons over here just notice how many options are there I would say insane amount of options are here you do not need to worry about it and also in terms of the animations there are plethora of animations which are present by default here you can choose from them in the power menu we have this enable advanced restart and this is how it looks like if i just tap on restart it will show me directly rebooting option to the recovery or fast boot from right here then we have this disable power menu on lock screen for security and here we have the theme section we get the headline and body fonts plethora of fonts are here as you can see and we also have the nothing dot font and stuff if you are looking for all of those except for that we have the samsung one sony sketch all these fonts are present by default icon packs are there these are the options and we have the signal icon styles and plethora of options are there then we have the wi-fi icon styles as well icon shapes and stuff are there but again there is no lock screen clock style changing option but you do get the nav bar style changing option if you're using three buttons or something but yeah the lock screen clock styles they should have been there but yeah it's not there you will only get the stock android 13 kind of lock screen clock in the notifications we have this in call vibration make heads up less annoying and the annoying notification option and in the misc settings we have the ripple effect ignore windows secure flags unlock higher fps in games and the unmuted google photo storage so these are the all customizations which are present in this rom by default now in the display settings this is how it looks like we have the brightness level adaptive or auto brightness extra dim feature and inside lock screen let me actually show you if i go into it and disable the always on display there is the wake screen for notification age lighting option is also there and we have this double line clock control from lock device for the google home controls and for the face unlock you can choose it to be when swiping up and stuff and here if i just scroll down there is the ambient display and here we do have the pickup option let me just show you it is actually working fine if i just put the device on the desk and just pick it up on my hand as you can see the screen wakes up in the ambient mode so the pickup gesture is actually working fine and that is what i like over here except for that we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes then we have the dark theme and you can schedule it this actually looks good you can actually switch it to dark mode by just tapping over here and we have this custom theme you can go with the black vivid or monet then the espresso and stuff is here and we have the night light the colors you can choose it to boosted and we have this auto red screen and the allow window level blurs double tap to wake and then we have this custom display settings where you will get the resetting and the high brightness mode in the wallpaper and styles this is how it looks like again we have this superior voice wallpaper and you can change the wallpapers from here we have this on device wallpaper too that you can use looks pretty glowy i would say and here we have this live wallpaper and the styles and stuff then we have the 16 colors for the wallpaper and the basic colors i would say then the dark theme and the app grid we can set up to 6 by 10 let's talk about the battery settings this is how it looks like well we get a k profiles i would suggest that you use this auto create profile so it will boost the performance depending on the app that you are using you can also switch it manually to battery balance and performance there is a battery temperature battery optimization and stuff per app you can choose from right here now let's talk about the battery life i have been using it with the aqua battery app to actually test it and with that i have got about 7 hours and 40 minutes of estimated screen on time so that is really good i would say depending on your usage it will vary of course but for me the estimated screen on time is about 7 hours and 40 minutes and that is decent again and i have a brand new battery over here although but even if your battery is old i would say it will definitely give you five plus hours of screen on time no worries and the screen off or the standby time is about five days the combined use shows as 30 hours so that's decent again and we have this battery health section where you can see my battery health shows up as 90 percent and again fast charging is working perfectly fine you do not need to worry about it in the sound and vibration settings this is how it looks like we have this live caption and stuff if you scroll down more we have this vibration and haptics for everything and we have the screenshot sound screen locking sound and the per app volume control is also there and we have this me sound enhancer and from here you can choose the presets the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth and even the speaker and earpiece has been really good i don't know, I have a sim card over here but yeah over volte calling and stuff the sound quality should be good enough too and we have this choose preset option there you can choose from the bass boosted and the bass reduction and stuff and the smart scene options are there enable the hi-fi option is also there if you have a really great pair of headphones you can use that there is the haptic feedback customization you can change the intensity of the whole ui from here and we have the clear speaker option as well you can clear the speakers if it sounds muffled and in the security settings i have already showed you everything like the fingerprint speed and stuff with the app lock 
But here, this is what I like. You don't have to go into the more settings to actually access the app lock. You can directly access the app lock from the security settings itself. So this is really handy in my opinion. All of the ROMs should follow this. There is the app lock and you can go directly into it from here. And in terms of overall daily driving performance and the scrolling and stuff is really smooth. I did not face any issues whatsoever. Even with 90 Hertz, I would say the display is going on really, really smoothly. No issues and up to 90 Hertz. Yes, the color shifts a little bit. So I can definitely recommend using 72 Hertz or something if you are annoyed with the color shifting. But otherwise, the whole device performance stays really smooth. As you can see, there is no choppiness, no stutters or glitches at all. In my opinion, it is a really smooth experience overall. And it does not have any kind of those like issues which we used to get on Evolution X from like the PIP mode bug or something like that. There is no problems like that over here and the whole UI stays really, really smooth. So you can say this is a really good alternative to Evolution X, but yeah, it does not have that much customization of Evolution X that I have to say. But overall, this is a really good option in my opinion. And if you want to look for benchmarks, here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. So let me in the comments what you guys think about the latest build of the superior OS based on Android 13 for the Redmi K20 Pro. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends if they want to know about this ROM. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.